<clears throat> All right. I've heard this band. <laughs> so is it, is it really a band? Oh, it sounds like it would be a good band. Um, so today, today's more of like an introductory. Th this is going to um, launch a couple other um, presentations that I'll, I'll be doing following this, but I wanted to introduce just like a basic concept and talk about pines in general and then a specific grouping of pines that we call the Southern Pines in, in North Carolina. Does anyone have a guess what type of ecosystem this photo is showing or what type of, what, what, what is the tree in that photo? Any guesses? This is, a, this is a very iconic southern landscape. Specifically, you would find it in the coastal plain and the sand hills. Is it longleaf? Yeah, longleaf. <clears throat> yeah, so this is, this is uh, early in the South's history, kind of at the, um, at the uh, horizon of European settlement, and then certainly before then, uh, a lot of the sand hills and the coastal plain um, for a fairly wide stretch of coast all the way down the coast and then all the way into like East Texas, um, up to Virginia, uh, you would find these pine savannas where pine trees are the only essentially uh, cover type. Um, and a, a couple different tree species form this type of ecosystem, pine dominated. I, I heard um, one forester describe these types of ecosystems as a prairie that just happens to have trees. But anyways, <clears throat> Yeah, so this is a longleaf pine ecosystem. This was taken in the Green Swamp, which if you've never been there is well worth the trip, kind of down near Wilmington. You'll, you'll find a lot of like carnivorous plants, like pitcher plants and um, um, Venus flytraps. Yeah, <clears throat> as well as a few others. All right, so let's test your knowledge. What pines occur naturally and how many occur naturally in North Carolina? And so. Uh, within North Carolina, there are three primary, and you can break this down a little bit more, but three primary geographic types. We have the mountains or the Appalachians. We have the Piedmont, um, which is where we are at. And then we have the coastal plain. <clears throat> so let's see how close we can get. Start, let's start naming. What, what do you know, pine species that are native to North Carolina? Virginia. Virginia pine? Let the office start. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, office. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be disappointed if all we have is Virginia pine. <laughs> North Carolina pine. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> I think Carolina pine is a common name for one that has a more, a higher used common name or more frequently used common name. Loblolly. Southern yellow. That's going to describe uh, four pines. But um, so I'm looking for something more specific. So Loblolly, Virginia, come on guys. Shortleaf. Uh, white pine, eastern white pine. Um, so that's four. Longleaf. Yep. Longleaf, that's five. Slash. Slash. Does not occur naturally in North Carolina, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that. We're we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit. All right. That 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 starts in South Carolina. We will, we will. <laughs> All right, so that's five. So the, the remaining, I think, are primarily going to be in the mountains. So I'm just going to fill this in. Tabletop pine, um, pitch pine, and now I can't remember what we've covered. Tabletop pine, tabletop pine, pitch pine, and oh, pond pine. Oh. All right. Those <clears> three. <throat> <laughs> Interestingly, so because. Because of these three really distinct geographic regions, again, the mountains, the Piedmont, and the coastal plain, North Carolina actually has uh, the highest rates of bi biodiversity, both within like tree species and then just general vascular plants of, I believe, any state in uh, North America or in the United States. So we're, we're really lucky to have um, all this diversity. And on the right, this is kind of a fun tree. That's my brother standing at the base of the former uh, state champion longleaf pine out near Weymouth Woods. They found one larger in Uari of all places. Yeah. 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 Longleaf isn't, that's about a 40 inch diameter tree. I think if I remember correctly, maybe like 42 inches. Um, longleaf, loblolly definitely gets much larger than longleaf pine. All right. <clears throat> so of those eight pines, four are considered southern pines or they're also will be called southern yellow pines or just yellow pines. Uh, so can you guess and one of them is one that, um, that Julius already mentioned, but that doesn't occur naturally in North Carolina. So I'm just gonna give you that one. That's gonna be uh, slash pine. So that's one of these Southern yellow pines. So there are three. 
Um, and to give you a clue, these are going to be very significant commercially. And then that also would have played a very significant role in um, the development of North Carolina, uh, North Carolina's commerce and economies. Um, any guesses what a few of these pines might be? Again, commercially significant. So the pines that you might expect to see in plantations. Loblolly is the biggest one. Yeah, historically, Longleaf pine is also going to be the back upon which a lot of the South was built. And we'll cover that really briefly in a minute. And shortleaf, that's the other one. So shortleaf, longleaf, loblolly, and slash pine are the Southern yellow pines. And even so today, they account for about 37% of the commercial softwood, softwood timber in the market. So if you think about that, that's really an enormous amount for four species of pine trees. I believe there are, it's somewhere between 30 and 40 species of pine that are native to North America. So these four are, are doing some really heavy lifting in terms of the materials we're using to build our country, both historically and then uh, presently. <clears throat> All right, so what makes a Southern pine? Um, from a woodworker's perspective, the wood is functionally indistinguishable from each other for these four species. They're very, very similar. So they're all used for similar purposes. Now you may find them. Uh, Loblolly is, um, I think, one of the preferred because it has the fastest growth rate, especially when it's young. And then it's more adaptable to some soil types that are more problematic for like shortleaf pine, for example. And its range is also a lot wider than longleaf pine. Um, <clears throat> And then one of the reasons I, why they're so valued is that they have a high percentage of late wood. Does anyone, does anyone want to give me a definition of like early wood versus late wood? It has to do with the type of um, porosity that you find within a growth increment. Early wood grows more quickly during the warmer months and late wood grows more slowly, more densely. That's the word, yeah. So uh, Justin gave us the answer. Early wood uh, grows faster, it's lighter and late wood um, occurring later in the season when temperatures are colder, there's a little bit less water, it's gonna be denser. And so those, those tracheids, those, um, those tubes that are transporting water, they're gonna be larger in the early wood and then tight, or smaller and tight, more tightly packed in the late wood. So it has a very high percentage of late wood if you look at the um, uh, breakdown of late wood to early wood. Uh, and so what this was used for historically and what really put North Carolina on the map economically was the use of this wood in naval stores. And naval stores, that term refers to um, products that were stored um, for shipbuilding, primarily. They all had other uses, but where they were really economically significant was uh, for shipbuilding. So really quickly, some of those products were turpentine, rosin, pitch, and tar products. Um, I'm gonna skip over what each of those are specifically, unless anyone's like really, really curious, but they're all essentially just different products that came from pine um, for shipbuilding. What's that? Masts. And masts, yeah. <clears throat> so, and for these types of products um, that other parts of the country were producing, uh, North Carolina was the largest producer in the world. I can't remember, it was uh, something like 80% like of naval stores were, that were being exported uh, came from North Carolina. And then so from a really critical period, 1720 to 1870, North Carolina was the greatest producer of these products in the world. That's a, that's a huge part of our cultural heritage in the South. And a lot of the reason why I'm talking about this is there's kind of a bit of, um, I'll call it racism, but it's speciesism. Like people hate pines in this area. It's a very common refrain. People want to like remove the loblolies. And so I want to give you guys a point to like appreciate these both for their commercial value within the cultural history of the South, but then they're, um, they're also ecologically very productive as well. Um, and then the, the invention of the sawmill really brought the Industrial Revolution to the South. Um, and as we've talked about, it's a very, very highly prized um, wood for um, timber uh, for construction purposes. Um, <clears throat> the, the slave trade was really it was a very small portion of the population that was involved in um, the use of enslaved peoples. Uh, lumber, the um, products associated with pine trees was a much larger, more widespread um, economy that more people were participating in. And both of them have really tragic histories involved. This isn't necessarily like, a, oh, North Carolina, like our pines built us, like we devastated these ecologies. Uh, just ruined them. Massive over over um, over harvesting, uh, and then a lot of like the turpentining 
uh, methods for extracting turpentine were, were really unsustainable, even though we knew about more sustainable turpentining methods at the time. So across multiple states, too. And across multiple states, yeah. <clears throat> so there, there's, there is a bit of tragedy, or, or a lot of tragedy mixed in with all of this. All right, so I wanted to, to finish. Oh, and then before we talk about uh, Slash Pine, uh, if you're old enough to, to recognize that photo. <laughs> yeah, so Slash is the guitarist from Guns N' Roses. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's Slash. Um, yeah, to, to really explain my joke here, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you if you don't know who Guns N' Roses are. What's that? Yeah, David actually named his son after this pine tree. Yeah, yeah well, no, in fact. Uh, <clears throat> so yellow pines, there are also two pines out west that are referred to as yellow pine. Uh, it's the, or before I say it, does anyone have a guess what they might be? Anyone from the west, Vincent, you might know. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Julius, ponderosa. Yeah, and then the other, the other species is very difficult to differentiate from ponderosa, Jeffrey pine. Jeffrey and ponderosa are the two western yellow species, or yellow, yellow pines. All right, so I have become convinced that I occasionally see, even though it is not native here, slash pine in uh, our communities. It's very distinctive. Uh, so this, this looks quite a bit like ponderosa pine to me. Now to identify ponderosa, I'd stick my nose between the bark plates and there is a, a really wonderful kind of like vanilla is how I would describe it, aroma that both ponderosa and Jeffrey pine get. Cause I, I had to rule out ponderosa pine um, here and it, it does not have that scent. But these, these kind of cinnamon orange bark plates are really distinctive. Uh, and if you were to peel back the bark plates, that would be even more present. Now here I have uh, loblolly needles that occur in uh, fascicles of three. Now a fascicle is just a fancy way of referring to the bundle of needles. Um, and then the fascicle sheath is that little bit of uh, tissue that holds the, the, the fascicle together. Um, and one of, one of the important things to know about pine identification is that the number of needles will narrow the range of possible species you're looking at. So loblolly has mostly three, sometimes two, sometimes four. So you, you want to count like several on a branch before saying like, oh, this is like a three needled pine. Uh, longleaf is also going to have three, uh, three needles. But we very rarely see longleaf in this area. It's occasionally planted, but not very common. Uh, at least per my anecdotal uh, experience. Um, so with slash pine, you're gonna notice immediately that the needles are substantially longer. And I believe this is slash pine. I've sent photos to an NC, um, NC State agriculture agent who agreed with my, um, my assessment this, that this was likely slash pine. Then I also contacted an arborist a lot of you know um, in South Carolina to ask him where he, because he'd be working with it if he thought these photos were slash pine, and he said, "Yeah." So I'm, I'm pretty confident that this, this is. But so these are primarily occurring in fascicles of two. You will occasionally find them three, but it's mainly going to be two. The needles are quite a bit longer. It, they're shorter than longleaf, longer than loblolly. But the really distinctive thing, um, along with these, this uh, really distinct coloration on the bark plates, are going to be the cones. Um, I don't know if you can tell from a distance, I'll pass these around. There's kind of a lacquered or a glossy finish on these pine cones that loblolly is gonna lose really rapidly once it hits the ground. And then I can, I can grip this and squeeze it. That's the biggest thing without hurting my hand. You cannot do that with, with a loblolly pine cone. Like it is really painful. So the prickles, there are prickles on the, uh, on the ends of the scales for slash pine, but they're much more kind of like diminished. Yeah, yeah, because I can squeeze this as hard as I can and it's, it's not going to hurt me. So I'll pass these around and you can look at that for yourself. The longer needles here are slash pine and then... Um, Where'd you find that, Sam? Oh yeah, good question. So this was, there's a community center with some like walking trails really near like the Harris Teeter that also has the movie theater in Chapel Hill. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The yeah. University. That yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, there, there's like a Dunkin' Donuts yeah. and yeah. some like Chinese food. Yeah, whatever. Oh, 
Yeah, so there's an apartment complex and it only has slash pine. So I believe that it was a former slash pine plantation that was then probably like thinned out and then built out to be this property. I, I would estimate, I'm, I have zero confidence in my ability to estimate tree age, but I would estimate anywhere from like 60 to 80 years old on the uh, pine trees I was looking at. It may have been, I didn't think to grab the name of the apartment complex. I have seen these other places. I'll just come across a tree occasionally and go, you know what? This really doesn't look like lob lolly to me, but it has the long needles. The, the cones are like kind of the right size, but I think I see this occasionally. I know that NC State has some slash pine that they've planted. And I, I was, I have a citation for this if anyone really wants to challenge me. Um, <clears throat> how dare you challenge me? <laughs> I mean, you got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, there is a, there is a book, um, that I was able to find that references slash pine being used experimentally in plantations. Um, in, it was widely planted in North Carolina, according to this source. And then I found another webpage, um, that also, that I would not, I don't think as, I wouldn't trust it as much as a source, but it also talks about slash pine as having been widely planted in North Carolina. So I do think that we'll come across it occasionally, especially here where, there are a lot of like plant nerds that might know quite a bit about like Southern ecologies and for both the cosmetic appeal and some really distinctive, more colorful bark. Um, and then just the, the kind of historical significance of this group of four pines, the yellow pines, the Southern pines or the Southern yellow pines. Uh, I could see someone maybe planting them deliberately. Um, so <laughs> any, uh, any questions? So this is going to kind of set up a, a larger discussion, discussion I want to have primarily loblolly. We did a short leaf pine that I might, a uh, short leaf pine presentation last summer that I might revisit as part of this. Um, but since loblolly is such a common component of the trees we're working with, I want to talk about um, eventually uh, diseases that are common that I see frequently affecting loblolly and some things to watch out for as a crew that might affect how you approach a tree a little bit. That, that will be the, the next presentation. Did you come across any information about whether it crosses with the other southern yellow pines? Um, so Craig asked if it crosses with the other southern yellow pines. I would imagine, I don't think I saw anything specifically, but we do know that like loblolly and longleaf crosses, loblolly and shortleaf cross. And so I would imagine it does, but I would expect that to be occurring more where there's going to be a lot of opportunity for cross-pollination. Yeah, so I don't think we, I think we do see lob, lob lolly short leaf crosses. I'm pretty sure I have seen examples of it, um, but I doubt we see lob lolly long leaf crosses just because long leaf is such a, like almost not even worthy of mention as. Oh, uh, it, it does hybridize with uh, Yeah, with, uh, so Craig found on Wikipedia, lolly. yeah, lob lolly. I, I think I think Wikipedia is accepted by a lot of universities as a quotable citation. I trust it's, it's been a long time since I've been in college, though. So your, your, your college teachers were just jealous. Of <laughs> <laughs> See, what I did in high school is I just went in and edited it to say whatever I needed it to say, and then I could. <laughs> yeah. So. See if see if you can find some uh, examples of slash pine, and then if you find it, if you think you found some, text me. I'd be curious to know where you're finding it. Amanda. So looking at that picture, you can see the sandbags in the back. Yeah. Is location based on flood any indication of that it is more likely slash pine? Uh, slash pine is a coastal species, um, <clears throat> but I yeah. I, I think that, it, I can't remember how widely adaptable it is. Like, so, so this is kind of another just general interesting point. Um, short leaf pine um, has, you will find short leaf in, on the coastal plain, in the Piedmont and also the mountains. In terms of like physiogeographic variety, uh, short leaf occupies like the largest swath or the, the largest number of sites compared to these other pines that have some more like specific preferences. So, yeah, to, to answer your question, Amanda, I, I'm not sure. I'm, there, there could very well be a relation. There, there is a, um, a stream that runs very closely, yeah, yeah to this apartment it, complex. It floods its boundaries at least once a year. So yeah, and a little, yeah. Amanda was involved in a swift water rescue recently for an apartment complex that flooded, that's in a flood, yeah, 
flood prone area. No, it was actually honestly just wondering if the yeah. floods. Yeah. Shout yeah. Yeah, that, that was just a, like a general shout out to Amanda's <laughs> badassery. Yeah. <laughs>